Hello and welcome to this quick video tutorial on colour correcting in Premiere Pro CS 5.5. Here's our first shot we're going to look at. As you see they're both fairly dark, but they're not actually that far from being correct. Okay, so first of all we need to go to a colour correction workspace, just like that. And what you'll often find is that it will come up like this by default as showing video but in all of these monitors in all of these monitors you can access the video scopes in this case we're going to come down here to the YC waveform which is going to give us a luminance curve a luminance waveform that we can adjust the luminance values with how this scope works is that it is showing us uh, this side of the screen is the is this side of the screen, this side of the screen, is this side of the screen. You see the bright torch? There it is there. It's that spike. And we can increase the intensity so that we can see things a bit better. If I just click, just click there and drag. I'm up to 100%. You can see the intensity, you can see that spike a bit clearer. Often if you take the intensity too high, it's hard to see the detail. It might be easier for this tutorial to leave it up though. Now we need to add some effects. The effects are what we're going to actually use to do the color correcting. I'll drag that window back a bit. And the effects we're going to use are going to be the Luma curve and then the three way color corrector and broadcast colors. We'll look at the effects controls here. Just make that a bit smaller. It's important that broadcast colors is last. Last, Broadcast colors will clamp the output so that your colors are legal. In other words, you cannot broadcast whites that are too white or reds that are too red. Uh, there's limitations of what broadcast can, can do. So it's important that this one is last in the chain. I could put it up there. And now I've clamped the colors up here. But then the corrections I made down here might take the video outside what was acceptable. So that's no good. I'm going to drag it back down to where it belongs. Broadcast colors down the bottom. Okay, so first we've got to adjust the Luma curve, then the three-way color corrector, and then the broadcast colors we'll just leave alone. There are some controls there which allow, allow us to set for exactly what sort of uh, um, clamping it's going to do. We're not even worrying to this time about reducing saturation. We could apply a second broadcast color one to do the same job if we wanted to. Okay. Now, Luma curve. We've got this. This is the clip we have selected, and I'm going to just, if I drag this and lift it up, we're brightening the whole image, and we've gone right up to the top there and that's probably a little bit dangerous. That means that this there'll be a lot of information which has gone blown out completely, which is completely white with no detail in it. I don't actually mind if there's no detail right in the in the torch, but we don't want that elsewhere. I could drag it the other way. And now it's gone completely dark and we have crushed the blacks. When you have a solid line like that, the term is crushing the blacks. All the blacks have lost all the detail usually what you're going to want is a shape that's going to look a bit like this. On most shots, this is a white dark shot, so it doesn't look quite right here. You're going to want to boost the highs a little bit and darken the lows, which will increase your contrast. It's a more satisfying image usually. But on this shot, I think it's so dark that we, that we dare not do that. Usually two points is all you need. So we've just boosted the highlights a little bit. What I want to see is that we have some information that's going right up to the top, right up here, and some information which is right down the bottom. If we make the, the blacks too light, then the whole image will look washed out. If there is no information going right up to the top, the image will look dull. It looks dull either direction. We need to have a full range of, of values from light to dark in almost every image. There will be the occasional image that is an exception, but mostly most images have something at the top and something at the bottom. And if it's an overall dark image, it will be overall dark down here. And if it's a light image, most of the information will be at the top, but there'll still be a little bit of black down the bottom. Okay, so we've got our, done our luminance 
adjustment, which is the most important one actually. And now we'll look at the three-way color corrector. Now, what I don't like about this is that it is actually a rather complicated beastie. Um, it's overly complicated, especially compared to the Final Cut Pro systems, both in Final Cut 7 and Final Cut Pro 10. So, tonal range, we want to adjust the master. We can adjust the master, we can adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlights. Let's look at what we get if we get the master. Now we'll get a, a broad sweep control, and we'll just be able to say we want to have it looking more green or more violet, more cyan, and we'll just adjust it as we think. This line here is your skin tone line, and often you'll find that this is a very nice one to, to boost. It gives you that nice warm looking um, effect. What I'll often do is I'll increase here and decrease the saturation. So effectively what I'm doing is I'm taking color out taking the color that was in the video out and replacing it with the color that I want. Another one that might work well, rather well, especially for a spooky scene, is the exact opposite, into cyan. Now it's looking quite cool. And of course you've got your, your choice of all of these different colors. Um, and for a quick adjustment, that's really all you need to do. What you want to be looking at here when you're adjusting the color, though, is the vector scope which will show you where the colors lie. If you, especially if you want to match one shot to the next shot, you want to make sure that if I've got a, I'll increase the saturation just so we can see. You see that the, the line that these colors are coming on is, is, down, is out here. And if I take it the other way, it's going more in that direction. This is showing you where the the bulk of the colors lie. And so it's a very useful tool for making sure that your that your colors in subsequent shots are lying along the same general lines. Okay, let's suppose let's suppose we're going to use this cyanish type of look. Now we need to check that the whole shot's okay. So I might want to go back and tweak and tweak this to make sure that uh, I'm happy with these because I think that the luminance values there might be a little bit low. Mm, yeah, this probably is. To, it's a bit hard to see because I have the screen so small. If I was looking doing this properly, I'd make the screen much bigger and I'd be able to see more clearly whether we do have a little bit of information up there. I mean, this should parts of this should be completely white. We should just be touching on white around there. Okay, so now let's look at, so now we've got one shot set up. We have a second shot here, and if we go from that one, it's not matching rather well, is it? So you can see the same wall is looking quite cyanish here, and quite um, you know, a mix of colors here. So if we choose this clip and go copy, and then this one, Paste Attributes or Option V. And now we've stuck the filters that we put on this one have been stuck onto that one. And then what we'll tend to do is we'll look at this one, and we'll go through the we'll go through the entire timeline and we will just tweak each shot. Typically the main one you have to tweak is the Luma curve. Maybe the Luma curve here, if we if we thought that this was not matching so well, we might just want to maybe lighten it a little bit. I don't really think that's where we can actually get. Often, if you apply a very strong color correction, a strong look, the match is very easy. The match is only a few clips stick out as being ones that need attention. And that's the basics of color correction in Premiere Pro CS 5.5.